Hello, my name is Paula Rodriguez Otero. I am a hematologist working at the University of Navarra in Pamplona, Spain, and it is my great pleasure to present to you this uh, oral communication that was uh, shown at the ASH 2023 meeting about IDEC aptagene becluser or IDEC cell versus standard regimens in patients with triple class exposure, relapse refractory multiple myeloma, the updated analysis from KARMA 3. So as uh, treatment for multiple myeloma patients evolve uh, and patients continue to relapse, the management of these relapse refractory multiple myeloma patients remains uh, challenging. In addition, patients are becoming triple class exposed earlier in their treatment course and frequently develop disease that is also refractory to the three main classes of agents. There is no standard of care for patients with early line relapse and triple class exposed disease and prognosis remains poor with a median progression of free survival between three to five months and absence of standard of care therapies. In the primary analysis of the KARMA-3 with a close to 19 months of median follow-up, a single infusion of either cell demonstrated significantly longer and clinically meaningful improvement in progression-free survival versus standard regimens with deep durable responses in patients with triple class exposed relapse refractory multiple myeloma. In this presentation, we show results of the planned final PFS analysis and the first disclosure of interim overall survival with 13.9 months of median follow-up. So uh, patients eligible for KARMA-3 were randomized 2 to 1 to receive either cell or one of five different standard regimens, DPD, DVD, IRD, KD, or ELOPD. Patients that were allocated to the standard regimen R were treated upon this, until disease progression. And their way, they, after confirmation of disease progression, they could cross over to the IDSL arm to receive IDSL infusion. Patients that were assigned to the IDSL arm could receive up to one cycle of bridging therapy using the same standard regimens and this, as in the control arm with a minimum 14 days of washout between the last dose of bridging therapy and the start of the lymphodepleting chemo. Primary endpoint was progression-free survival assessed by the independent review committee and key secondary endpoints were overall response rate and overall survival. So 254 patients were assigned to the IDSL arm and 225 patients did receive IDSL therapy. In the standard regimen R, 132 patients were allocated and 126 started a treatment in the standard regimen arm. Importantly, 29 out of 254 patients in the IDSL arm never received IDSL therapy. In addition, the trial allowed for crossover, and so far, 56% of the patients in the standard regimen arm had crossover to the IDSL arm and already received IDSL therapy. Baseline characteristics were generally balanced between the two treatment arms. Overall, 66% of the patients had triple class refractory a myeloma, and 95% were refractory to daratumumab, indicating the difficult to treat patient population. With extended follow-up and a median follow-up of 31 months, uh, the median progression free survival continues to be significantly longer in the IDSL arm with a median of 13.8 months versus 4.4 months in the standard regimen arm with a hazard ratio of 0.49 and a 51% reduction in the risk of progression or death. Also with extended follow-up, a overall response rate continued to be superior in the IDSL R with an overall response rate of 71% versus 42% in the standard regimen R. In addition, both complete response rate and MRD negative rate in patients in CR were also higher in the IDSL arm as compared to the standard regimen's arm. Median duration of response and median progression free survival too were also longer for either cell arm as compared to the standard regimens arm. So, regarding overall survival, in this first disclosure of the overall survival data with a median follow up of 30.9 months, median overall survival in the either cell arm was 41.4 months versus 37.9 months in the standard regimen arm with a hazard ratio of 1.01. .01. Overall survival interpretation is difficult in these studies for various reasons. First, the study was not designed to provide definite conclusions regarding overall survival. 
And second, the patient-centric design allowing for crossover does confound the overall survival interpretation. In fact, 56% of the patients assigned to the standard regimen arm had already received IDSL after crossover. The crossover could happen as early as by month three with a median time from randomization to IDSL infusion of eight months. Importantly, 42% of the patients had already crossover by month 15 when the curves crossed. Therefore, if we see the pre-planned sensitivity analysis adjusted for crossover, there is a trend towards a significant improvement in overall survival for the IDSL arm with a hazard ratio of 0.72. Regarding overall survival, there is also an imbalance in early death events in the IDSL arm. And most of these early death events are seen in patients who didn't receive IDSL infusion. So as you see in the slide, 30 out of 254 patients died within the first six months from randomization and 17 never received IDSL therapy. In addition, the proportion of patients who die in the two treatment arms related to adverse events is comparable. Most of the early deaths occurred in patients harboring multiple high-risk features such as revised ISS stage 3, high-risk angiogenetic abnormalities, extramedullary disease, or high tumor burden. One of the explanations of the accumulation of early deaths in the IDSL arm could be the lower use of effective bridging therapy and the lower dose intensity in the bridging in the IDSL arm. Indeed, there was a lower use of DPD and KD that were shown to be the most effective bridging therapy and a longer time without therapy within the first 60 days. As you see here in the slide, in the IDSL arm, there was 26 days and in the standard regimen arm, there was also only six days, suggesting a lower dose intensity and a left effective bridging in the IDSL arm that could explain the early death events in the population of patients with high risk features. So if we uh, do an exploratory analysis in the treated population, excluding the early death events that occurred mostly in the first six months of therapy, we do see a, a trend towards a better survival in the IDSL arm with a hazard ratio of 0 0.83. Importantly, this, uh, uh, in this analysis, we are not adjusting for crossover. Regarding the safety profile with the extended follow-up, the safety profile of IDSL remained consistent without any new safety signal, no new CRS or investigated identified neurotoxicity events, no second primary malignancies of T cell origin, and no Parkinsonism or Guillain-Barré events reported. The most common uh, cause of this was disease progression, and the death related to adverse events were comparable between the two treatment arms. So in conclusion, with the extended follow-up, Karma 3 continues to demonstrate a significantly longer, a clinically meaningful improvement in progression-free survival with either cell versus standard regimens in patients with early line relapse and triple class exposed relapse refractory multiple myeloma across all groups. The patient-centric design allowing for crossover confounds the overall survival interpretation. 56% of the patients in the standard regimen arm had already received either cell, and the pre-specified analysis adjusting for, for crossover showed improved overall survival with either cell versus the standard regimens. Bridging therapy was suboptimal for patients with multiple high-risk features and rapidly progressive disease, and this highlights the importance of effective bridging therapy in any patient uh, undergoing CAR T cell therapy, but most importantly, in those with multiple high-risk features. The safety profile of IDSL was consistent uh, with previous uh, studies and manageable, and overall, the Karma 3 shows a favorable benefit risk profile with IDSL and support its use in patients with early line relapse and triple class exposed relapse refractory multiple myeloma, a population with poor survival outcomes with conventional therapy. And with that, I'd like to thank you all for your attention.